sales calls coming to residential lines. Uh, at this point, uh, and this is how remarkable it is that I say that uh, uh, the state appreciates its privacy, is that in Indiana, uh, you have to voluntarily uh, sign up for our do not call. So it's not something that's automatic. Uh, you have to take some affirmative step uh, to sign up for a government program. Uh, now they told me that we should expect somewhere in the teens, maybe 20% to be remarkable according to the people in Missouri and uh, Wisconsin that had, had earlier programs. Uh, in Indiana, two thirds of all residential phone lines are registered. Uh, on our do not call. So again, uh, people don't like to volunteer for any government program, but I think the sense of uh, personal privacy in their homes is something that's still uh, very well cherished in our state. Uh, I also note that uh, even though it started out as an interest in privacy, uh, an interest in having uh, some freedom at home not to be bothered, uh, we also have the lowest rate of fraud uh, over the telephone. I think it's clearly uh, because of the strong protections. Uh, people tell me that when they get a call, they know that it's somebody who's probably a fraudster. There's some scam going on because they've called in violation of the do not call. So although Hoosiers are known for our Hoosier hospitality, they've been known to scream do not call and slam the phone down. So there's one rare exception where our hospitality is to scammers. But let me switch from that kind of general background on the, uh, I think, the one state that I know uh, still jealously guards our privacy uh, to a little bit of the area that I'm here to talk about. You know, the incident of internet fraud and identity theft uh, is something that uh, you can see the trend in statistics. Uh, it's the fastest growing crime in Indiana, uh, internet fraud and identity theft. Uh, nationally, according to the Javelin Group, uh, over 10 million U.S. residents became victims of identity theft last year. 71% uh, of fraud uh, dealing with identity theft happens the week after uh, the victim's personal identity has been stolen. Uh, so it's a, it's a crime of uh, both opportunity uh, and it's something that happens very quickly. So both of those statistics require us to be much more vigilant in terms of our consumer protection. I tell people that when we sue somebody for some violation, if I see 10 victims, uh, I feel like we've done an adequate job of consumer protection. If I see 100 victims, uh, I ask myself and my staff whether we've done enough uh, to protect uh, victims. In 2009, uh, over 500 reported data breaches, uh, large-scale data breaches, uh, that resulted in more than 2.2 million personal records being exposed. Uh, so again, these don't all result in identity theft, uh, but the amount of data uh, that either inadvertently or on purpose is uh, breached is something that's a growing problem. Uh, they try to estimate the cost of each breach, which I, I'm not sure how they quantify, but according to the um, statistics, they claim that uh, between $90 per record uh, is the economic impact. Uh, it, it's pretty difficult when you try to quantify these things. Uh, I often think that the damage to a company's reputation uh, is usually one of the most unknown quantities, but uh, we've seen a number of people who've had large-scale data breaches that have had serious impact to their uh, market share as well as their stock. Uh, so if you look at just the sheer economics of uh, your goodwill and the reputation of your company following a data breach, it's very significant. So I'm not sure if that's calculated in these national statistics, but uh, it probably should be. So I think we're more and more we're starting to see that data is a very valuable commodity uh, for both the companies and the consumers. Uh, I've noticed it in uh, some of the, the uh, work we do with companies that following uh, some of the uh, public relations disasters, um, there gets to be competition uh, among their rivals to start talking uh, publicly about their security uh, and the, the 
way that they handle privacy matters. So I think this competition in the marketplace uh, will more and more focus on companies' abilities uh, to protect your personal data uh, and to secure your privacy. I think that's particularly true if you follow uh, some of the issues involving Google. Uh, I know um, uh, in meeting with the, um, some of the company lawyers over the past few years, uh, they recognize that this is something that uh, they've had to address over and over again. Uh, and I do think that it's going to become something that the public at large, uh, while on the one hand people claim that there's not as much sensitivity uh, to privacy, uh, the uh, fear of being uh, used, the, the uh, data being used for other purposes, uh, I think is something that will register with the public, even if they don't have the same sensitivities to privacy that uh, people had years ago. Let me, uh, you know, one of the things we do in our consumer protection role, uh, we try to provide a lot more information to the public, uh, particularly regarding being proactive. Again, this focus on protection rather than enforcement uh, is something that I've tried to instill in my office. Uh, trying to encourage people to understand more about managing and encrypting their um, information or deleting personal data and how to do that. Uh, we have a, a unit uh, inside the Office of the Attorney General called the Identity Theft Unit. Uh, so it was created earlier uh, and then uh, legislatively enacted. It's, it's funded through the state. Uh, but it, essentially it, it serves at least three major purposes. Uh, it supports the investigative arms of local law enforcement uh, dealing with um, prosecution of identity theft. Uh, most uh, local police departments, the state police, the county sheriffs, uh, are ill-equipped uh, tr to try to investigate and prosecute ID theft. Uh, so we support on a statewide basis that, again, working with both the federal government and our state colleagues, uh, we try to help uh, provide additional resources and the investigative tools uh, so that we can help law enforcement in their work uh, to provide this information prosecutors. We also have a number of attorneys uh, that will sit second chair or if asked, we have uh, what's called concurrent jurisdiction, we can be asked to prosecute the case as well. Uh, the second, and again I should put this uh, probably closer to the top, but uh, this whole educational component, uh, the, uh, the head of our identity theft unit uh, often spends a um, portion of the week going out and publicly promoting the educational side dealing with uh, managing and encrypting your data and best, best practices of personal protection. Uh, so those resources that we use to teach Hoosiers how to better protect their identities. Uh, and again, we often will couch it in the same frame where we'll have, uh, we'll talk about do not call because it's got such a large uh, reach in terms of public knowledge. Uh, we also say if you need to protect yourself in other ways, and then there's what we call the uh, consumer protection toolkit. So once you've got their attention on uh, probably the most well-known of our tools uh, to help people protect themselves, then we'll list a whole series of other tools, uh, including how to protect yourself from identity theft. Uh, there's several, um, you know, thousand people in our state each year that become victims of identity theft. Uh, we've worked with the Indiana General Assembly, and I think uh, we've come up with probably some of the best solutions to uh, the uh, victims' uh, problems uh, that occur. Uh, if you've ever met somebody that's been a victim of identity theft, or if you've ever been one yourself, you'll know that this problem can haunt you for a good long time. Uh, so one of the things that we've been doing over the past few years is to work uh, in our consumer uh, role uh, to work with the victims, even while they become maybe witnesses in a trial. So we've already gotten involved in uh, the investigative role, we work with the prosecutors. Uh, we also started to work with the victims. Uh, so two years ago, we went to the legislature after having seen the, uh, the nature of the victimization that continues long after we may have prosecuted somebody. Uh, and we came up with a solution uh, that other states are now taking a look at. In Indiana,